how to record an in-person podcast on an unlimited budget. Now, let's break out the champagne. Ha <laughs> ha! We've got all the money in the world to spend on this one, so let's go for it. Let's talk about the microphone. My personal favorite is the Electro Voice RE20. It's the perfect radio and spoken word production mic, and it really brings out the best in your voice. At least, for me it does. And that said, when you're investing in a high quality mic, I highly recommend that you try before you buy. Some other great alternatives to these could be the Shure, the Neumann, or possibly even the Rode microphone. Just make sure that you pick a mic that you're comfortable with, that you feel makes your voice sound good, and that you're happy with. And once you've picked this mic, buy four of them. Or buy one of each so you can mix and match with each guest that comes in if you're really into that. But regardless of what you do, it should be a drop in the bucket for you with an unlimited budget, right? Okay, now let's talk accessories. If you're getting the RE20, you can definitely go and get a shock mount and a pop filter for this, but if you're traveling, you're probably not gonna need this whole setup. This is gonna get bulky and heavy to carry. Now granted, this is an unlimited budget, so you may have a Sherpa to carry everything for you. I don't know, I'm just saying, you might. But if you don't, I recommend getting something like this RE20 with just a pop filter on it. And if you've already bought an RE20 and you haven't found the pop filter that looks like this and you find it really cool, go to Broadcast Supply World. That's where they custom make these and they're fantastic. So I highly recommend them if you're gonna do that. Now, in addition to that RE20 and the pop filter that you're gonna get, you may want a gain booster. And for that, I recommend the Cloudlifter CL1. You really don't need it on the RE20 as I mentioned in a previous video, but, for some instances, it's just better to have, if you're finding that the recorder you're using has a lot big noise floor or something, it's great to have for the RE20. Um, you definitely need it if you're gonna be using something like the Shure SM7B and certain other dynamic mics just don't have very much gain to begin with, so you've gotta do something to boost that up and the Cloudlifter is a great choice for that. Now, for headphones, we're recording in person, right? So we want headphones that can be compact but also have good sound quality to them. And for that, I recommend the Audio-Technica MX-50s. These are really great. And of course, as you can see here, they get really compact, which I really like, but they fold out easily. You can put them on your head. You can even move one off of your ear if you need to. And if you want a DJ, you can do that with this too. Of course, you know, get the disco bottle, draw it down. And, drop a beat in here yeah just like that okay that's not really what this is for but it's a great headphone and it's a great tool and again just buy four of them and you'll be golden and of course you could get something like the Bayer Dynamic DT 770s as well but just frankly what you really need to be looking at is what's going to sound good what's going to give you the most flexibility and what's going to be the most compact when you travel and, and that fits the bill on all those accounts so that's why I recommend that as for the recorder I highly recommend you get something like the Rodecaster Pro. Um, it looks great on a desk if you're wanting to say, hey, I podcast and I look cool when I do it. There's nothing quite like the Rodecaster Pro or the Pro 2. They're also easy to use and they handle phone calls like a pro. In fact, that's one of the things I love about it. It's got great Bluetooth connectivity and it even has a good um, wired cable out that goes into a phone and they work really great. They'll also work great with tablets, laptops, everything. So they're fantastic for that. However, that said, there's a couple things to be aware of with this recording unit. It's got some preamp distortion which you have to look out for and also the effects processing just frankly feels kind of lackluster maybe they've made some improvements with the latest software i don't know i've switched recording units since but um they're pretty good overall and you got to make sure you keep an eye on the mic levels and avoid relying on those onboard effects just avoid them like the plague turn them all off make sure that nothing is activated that you don't want activated and be happy with it now if you really want to flex you may consider something like the zoom f8n pro Unlike the Rodecaster Pro, this is an actual professional tool. You can record in 32-bit float and manage your audio from an iPad or other smart device. Frankly, it's a cool toy. I mean tool, it's a cool tool. And that said, I really only advise you go for this recorder if you have previous experience recording with other Zoom recorders and have a good understanding of the technical capabilities of the device you're getting. Cause it can do a lot and it's used in everything from podcasts to professional movie 
movie production. So be sure you know what you're getting yourself into is what I'm saying here. And there's also additional accessories you might need that you wouldn't need if you got something like the Rodecaster Pro, um, which interfaces frankly a little better with computers and things like that. And just to be honest, again, this is probably gonna be overkill for most podcasters, but it's definitely something you should consider if you're gonna have a lot of people on your podcast. I mean, it's got eight XLR inputs. I don't think you need eight people on a podcast at one time, but there you go, you could do it with this. So there you have it. With these tips and tricks, you'll be well on your way to optimizing your audio recording setup and increasing productivity. Remember, it's all about finding the gear that works best for you and your needs. 